right so i would like to request each and every members to turn on their videos as well because see i um i'm um, like uh, starting this session for you guys and if i cannot able to like uh, interact with you throughout the journey then it will be a like waste of time i believe so it will be helpful if you can turn on your cameras so that we can be on same page after all we are we all are the teachers right hello ma'am thank you for turning on the camera so in this session uh, first of all we start the session with the formal introduction of what i am going to cover throughout this three sessions of 10 days and after the 10 days we can come to the proper conclusion what we can go for and how we conclude this whole chapter like uh, we already heard that icsc and uh, cbsc board members were already introduced some of the circulars that we went through that particular meeting uh, organized by the cisc so on that particular day they mentioned the uses of different labels right robotics and ai space so integrating the artificial intelligence and robotics in our classes is nowadays very important as you already know the in earlier times people used to have the registers to log in each and every data right in the notepad thank you so much ma'am for turning on your camera yeah. so in earlier days people were used to have uh, the regulars attendance sheet or books or some kind of things to write down the attendance on each and everything on the paper but the after 2020 it became compulsory for each and every person to at least have the basic knowledge in computer application so that they can utilize the technology and help themselves to figure out the easiest possible way to do certain tasks in time to reduce their time to reduce their effort and so on so why this stem and robotics labels has been introduced in our curriculum because as we well know a student must go through the practical orientation like practical implementation of those things which they are learning through their conventional classroom program so it is very much important for them to have the proper understanding of what they are learning in their conventional classroom programs so through stem robotics and ai what we are trying to do is to let them have the practical understanding of the concepts which they are already learning in the in the process and uh, how we are we can able to implement those in our classroom program that is the most important portion because we are totally unaware of the situation and we don't know where to start what software to choose and what specific syllabus to follow to cope up with this syllabus guideline provided by the cisat let me tell you one thing which i faced one problem i faced throughout my classroom program is student do not have particular knowledge in the programming itself some of these student were good who already knew about the python programming and many more applications of embedded c but let me tell you the difference between the conventional programming which we are teaching our students in our classroom and what is the difference between the both the conventional programming and the robotics itself robotics is something different because we are talking about some of the hardwares in front of the students right so what we are trying to do is to integrate those programming into our hardware device to make do their thing work like it follows our command robot is all about which helps human being to carry out different tasks in different uh, particular point of environment right it help us reduce our effort as well as it help us to carry out different tasks where a human being cannot able to perform or suppose if i ask you to like go nearby and gather the data about the volcano itself then what will be your response is it possible for a normal human being to go without a gear or protective suits nearby to the volcano or to explore the outer space or to dive in deep into the sea and explore the depth of the sea no it is not possible because we will know we need some of the protective things like the armory or the suit to help ourselves to sustain the life on that particular point of environment so we need those stuff to carry out the research work over there to, to conduct the test over there so without the help of robotics in our life we cannot able to do those stuff and even though nowadays we see many more application of robotics in our day to day life many more application suppose if we are talking about uh, industry industry then what is what is happening in this, in industry is we are utilizing those automation stuff to help 
uh, manufacture something like the mobile phone itself because mobile phone uh, get manufactured in like lack of quantities thousands of quantities so it is important for us to have those automation in the industry itself so that we can complete those tasks without any problem in time so i'm going to show uh, share my screen first so that it will be uh, great for us to have a proper understanding how we will start this 10 days free session and then further we can able to discuss and come up with the ideas like how well you are in different programming languages and uh, how we can cope up with that as well. So I'm going to share my screen now and uh, I will start this journey together. So two things I would like to request you uh, to have prior to this training program, not for today, but from the next day onwards is to have a, a ID or like you have to sign up to three different platforms, three different platform, namely the Tinkercad platform, which you must sign, sign up for, and the MIT App Inventor platform, as well as the Microbeat platform. So these three platform will give you the flexibility to explore further in this domain. And it is very much important for you because these are the best basic requirements for a STEM teacher or a robotics AI teacher to have a proper understanding. So after the completion of sign up process, we will go through each and every open source platform and explore what is there in depth. So, so why to study these portal rather than having our own software and having our own programs to teach these students the concept of STEM? Because these are these open source platform. As the name implies, open source platform means uh, anyone can use this platform without paying anything. So I will bring those ideas for you to cope up with this thing, like having those things in hand so that it will be great for you to start with. Otherwise, you have to pay subsequent amount of money to different education provider throughout your stream journey. So you don't have to pay for anything like that. You should go for the Tinkercad platform, MIT App Inventor platform, and Microbeat platform so that we will utilize the same accordingly. So let me introduce the same concept first, then we will further move on to the, uh, you can see the agenda for today. Like I will explain the basic introduction of robotics and STEM, and uh, we will discuss about the law of robotics as well as uh, how you can explain this term in front of your students we will also discuss that, like introduction to basic robotics for our students. Because for a teacher perspective, we have to know much more compared to our students. Then only we can able to deliver our content efficiently to them. And also we will discuss the basic components to build a robotic device, like the skeleton, sensor, and brain, as well as the command. So at the end, we will discuss different type of robots used in industry and in many places around. And also, we will have a proper introduction to basic electronic components. Let me show you one of the examples why I'm going to cover the basic electronics component in robotics and AI, because you must have the question, sir, we can able to start this using the Python code. You have, just have to write down the Python code and execute the same to uh, show them, like, this is my visual recognition program and this is my... So we are talking about robotics, not about the UI development or app development kind of stuff. So robotics means integration of both the software part and the hardware part. It requires both of the mutual co uh, cooperation of both of the things. So in this, uh, one of the example I would like to show you uh, beforehand to understand the basic importance of uh, like understanding the basic electronic component. Suppose if your student come to you and say some of the ideas like, ma'am, I would like to build this particular device, or I do have this idea to develop this particular project or something like that, then how your school can perform better in different platforms? Like if they want to go for the robotics championship, or they would like to show them, show their project in front of the world as the final product. So one product I, I built uh, by the idea of my student in my school in NP, not point. So this particular device is known as wind-driven wind uh, mobile charging unit. So let me remove my background to re reflect this thing. So this particular device I built uh, to help students learn the concept of STEM. One student came to me with the idea like, how we can able to implement 
like how we can able to harness the power of uh, wind coming from the train side like i already mentioned that it is impossible to find a good power outlet in our regular general compartment general class compartment in in indian railways as well as in sleeper classes many of the power outlet won't work properly so to recognize that particular problem and to address that particular problem we built this device to harness the wind energy coming from the window side as well as we implemented the solar integration in this device so that we can able to charge this device to the solar power the reason why i'm showing you this in earlier times we used to teach our student the model of sustainable development green energy but have you ever implemented those in your life still now we are saying different things to our students like do not go for the plastic product do not waste this do not do that but after the class itself we sit we sit with our children in our home and have a bunch of chips uh, with them right so we are not focusing what as a teacher we meant to uh, become like if we do not implement those thing in our life style then how it is possible for us to teach the same so we have to come first to show them the implementation of sustainable development model and the green energy model so that they their brain can able to utilize the same and build some of the devices uh, the why i'm enforcing myself to build some of the devices because we want to solve some of the society's problem using the ideas they have if you ask ma'am grade 1 or grade 2 is student like what you want to become in your life right they will probably say they want to become astronaut or engineer or scientist or the doctor it's right but same is if you ask the same student after grade 12 like what you want to become in your life they will probably say they are preparing for some neat examination some some of them are preparing for g examination and some who lost their hope in a board examination and they will go for other domains as so this is the interest of things like well, how we can build those interest in our student to make them innovative like they can able to come up with the innovation they do have in their brain so we are talking about if i show you the uh if i give you two options like one option to choose between two of the fruits like apple or banana there will be 50 50% chance you will choose either the banana or the apple because you do have the two options which but through the stem robotics and ai what we are trying to do we are giving them the option of see this much amount of fruits in their hand like apple pineapple banana watermelon so many things so they can choose their career accordingly and all and as the robotics is implemented everywhere around us like in medical sector different surgery has been carried out using the robotics devices as well as in automation in industry like the mobile phone the computer you are using is also because of the automation itself so these things are is core related to each other and these things are important for all of us so that is why stem robotics and ai is important so some student will come to you and ask the question right whenever you ask the question to your student then they will probably answer like if you ask them what is robotics they will probably say that robotics is something which does have artificial intelligence right so let them know artificial intelligence is something different than the robotics because we are talking about upgraded form of robotics robotics does have a idea to take the command from human being and execute the same but artificial intelligence can able to decide what is needed to be done on that particular point of environment so we have to come up with the basic stuff first then we will move to the ai part otherwise it won't be clear for them in ethical manner what to do and what not to do so in future they will become the hackers of the robotics world and they will devise something like terminator for us and the world will be doomed so we have to take care of ethical con- consideration throughout our journey so i'm going back again uh, to share my screen using uh, by explaining the term stem and robotics so as you already know ma'am like uh, we heard this term before like right? stem and robotics so as per all of us like stem is all about science technology engineering and mathematics so why if i ask you the question like why science is important for all of us then what will be your answer a simple question to ask you can unmute yourself and uh, 
answer it throughout the journey because I'm also devoting my time to help yourself understand the concept in a proper way. As per my experience, maybe I do lack some of the things, but yes, through the mutual collaboration and the knowledge sharing through this, our platform, we can come up to the proper answer for us. Because science is the basic of everything, technology, engineering, and maths. That's great, ma'am. Means all I can say the, by the subject science, science gives us the ability to understand more about our environment. It gives us the flexibility to understand each and everything present near us, right? In our surrounding us. Similarly, technology and engineering plays a major role to help understand the concept of science by providing the a specific thing which makes our life easier. And during the pandemic, and still now, we are utilizing the technology to communicate with each other. This is the beauty of the technology. And an engineer is responsible to build those technology for us, to make our life easier, right? So on the next thing, we do have the mathematics. If I ask you the question, like, why mathematics is important for all of us, then what will be your answer? We have calculations every day, every way, sir. Being science, yeah. technology, engineering, max is there everywhere. Calculations are there everywhere. Great, ma'am. Thanks for your answer. So we can say that the, without using mathematics, we cannot able to define anything in this world. Or as per my point of view, without using mathematics, we cannot able to define anything in this world. Even though if you have to explain the shape and that the, uh, dimension of your room, then you must use the physical aspect of those things like length, width, and height to explain your room over a pond. So this is why the same is important for all of us. And why robotics then? So we are utilized. Yeah, we are, sir. Uh, universe has math everywhere. That's correct. That's good. So, yes, without using mathematics, obviously, we cannot able to explore anything in this world. Mathematics is the base of each and everything around us. So, why, why then why we are mentioning robotics and AI in our curriculum? If these domains is in, important, like the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, then why, why is there a need to help our students learn the concept of robotics and AI? You know, do you have any idea? Anyone from the group? Uh, to reduce the manpower. Yeah. If technology to reduce the manpower, yes, we can say that. Yeah. So the reason why we are utilizing robotics in our concept, teaching the uh, concept of STEM to our students, because we are utilizing robotics as a tool to help them learn the concept of STEM. Robotics is just a tool for us to help them learn the things around us by using the practical implementation. Like suppose if we are going to build one of the robots which can travel at some just uh, travel at some speed for up to some point, then we can able to calculate the velocity factor or the uh, distance between the unit point A and point B and so many things are there. Like one project I built using the micro bit uh, microcontroller. Right now it is showing the heart in here, which I will show you how to program this device. Okay, how to program this device. And one is to you, uh, by the help of one of the students, I built this uh, 3D design to print it out and accommodate in the same. So now you can see one hole is there on the top, on the front side, right? So through this device, a student can able to see the, um, see the height of the building and it will display some of the value in here. So we'll write down the values and using the concept of sine, hypotenuse relation between this uh, P, H, and B, like the perpendicular high hypotenuse and the base, we can able to calculate exact length of the building without even uh, going through the tape measure. So these are the projects which will help them understand the concept of this stream in a proper way. No, like that is it. Sir. Okay, fine. I muted him. No worries. So robotics is basically a branch of technology and engineering that focuses on creating machines like robots. And why we need robots in our life? Because robots help human beings to carry out different tasks in that particular point of environment where a human being cannot able to survive or cannot able to perform. Them. 
So we need those structure with us to help us do the task. Suppose like we still see many more examples are there in our society, as well as we are utilizing the rover system to explore different planets like the Mars itself. So they are sending the data to us to help us understand the current situation of that planet so that in future we can uh, like make the colonies over there to accommodate the earth peoples in there. And as we already know, we are booming with our population in in everywhere, not in India, but around the world, we are booming with our population. So this is why uh, this thing is important for us. So if we summarize the robotics in three basic aspects, like um, like each and every example we do have with us does have three basic thing in them. Like in our human body itself, we do have our eyes to give us the visual perception. We do have our brain to let uh, have the uh, understanding of what to do and what not to do on particular point of environment. Brain helps us decide what to do and what not to do. So, in, similarly, we do have uh, one more thing in robotics that is, uh, sorry, just let me grab the, yeah. So, in our body, what we do have, in computer system, we do have same thing. What we do to why we do while developing some of the projects, we do the biomimicry stuff, right? Biomimicry stuff. Once we are taking the examples from the nature, examples from the nature and try to omit those. Try to omit those using the machine. If you look closely to any of the devices present near around us, does have the same appearance like the human do have. Even though the vehicles does have two headlamps to like reflect the proper visual of a human being, like the eyes of the human being. So in human being, in computer system, in robotics, we do have three basic building blocks. First one is the input system. Second one is the processing unit. And third one is the output system. So in our body, we do have eyes, ears, and so many things like sensory organs to help us take the input from the environment. And brain in our body does have the role to process the data, right? We do have brain in our body to process the data as well as what for output, we do have our hand, legs, and so many things to produce the output. So in our body, we do have legs. So similarly, if we take the reference of these things and uh, or like correlate with the robotics itself, then what we can do, we do have different sensors in robots to help the robot understand more about their environment. We do have different microcontroller in robotics to help robotics think what to do and what to not, what not to do on some particular point of environment. And as we do have leg in our body, hands in our body to produce the motion, Robotic structure does have actuation system. Actuation, or we can say that locomotion system, which can able to produce motion or desired output as per our requirement. Like we do have lights and LEDs and sirens as well in robotics to produce some of the signals to our user to like uh, have the output feature. So this is why this is why we need to have the robotics. And also you can see some of the example is mentioned in this line as well, like sensors, motors, brains, called a computer, which helps them think and make the decision. So, yeah. So if we go further, then we can see like, uh, suppose, uh, imagine a robot called RoboBuddy. RoboBuddy is a helpful robot that can do many things. For example, it can clean the house by vacuuming the floor. Like in earlier days, we took this reference to teach our students like how we can able to see our future with the robotics, with robotics as well. But nowadays you can see many more examples are there like the MI vacuum cleaner is still exists in our home to clean out our houses, even though the dirt can able to detect uh, the sensors can able to detect the presence of dirt and obstacle and it won't collide with the wall, right? It will, if it, if it sees the obstacle present in front of the device, then it will move back or change its direction. So this is how uh, we can give them the example about we can, how we can build those devices to help people to save their, uh, save their life as well, save their time in the environment itself. So you can see the main, Thing, main interesting thing we should consider uh, 
while teaching the robotics to our students is where the term came from. So we usually call it as like many scientists invested their time to build the robot. But uh, fortunately, this thing came from a play, a normal play in uh, like uh, you can see one of the mentioned it here, RUR, Rossum Universal's Robot. If you look, like maybe all you already went through the same concept in using the Google search and all. So you must find the uh, importance, like how it came to existence using this particular play, RUR, Rossum's Universal Robots, written by the Sheikh playwright writer, the Carol Kepler, in 1920. And he performed a very well organized, like, what will be the future with these machines? Like automation will come to existence and it will help human beings to carry out different tasks around us. The robot itself is derived from Czech word robota, which means force, labor, or work. In the play, the robot were created to work for humans and perform tasks that will be difficult or dangerous. Over time, the word robot became popularized and adopted in various languages to refer to mechanical or electronic devices that can perform autonomously or with human control. Majorly, we focus on the human control part because we don't want our robot to become autonomous. And by the term autonomous, I mean robots, we are talking about some of the device we can, sorry, you can mute yourself while uh, speaking with others. So, sorry. So, whenever we try to build some of the robotics device, we try to not make it uh, the autonomous because the autonomous terms means robot can operate on their own without any human interaction. It can decide what to do and what not to do without any proper instruction from our side. So, they do have a very, uh, right, after the play itself, they have become an integral part of many industry and our daily lives, assisting us in various tasks and advancing technology and innovation. So as I already mentioned, um, like I gave the definition and I already mentioned the importance of the STEM education in our day-to-day -day life. Like we already discussed the importance of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But I, what I missed throughout the thing, but after explaining those stuff, it will help our students to build critical thinking and problem solving skills. So STEM education does require a proper way through which students have to uh, go through the research oriented uh, project development. It means they will uh, idealize something, they will start working on that particular project and they have to come up with different solutions and analyze the information, think critically to bring more ideas into it and finally find the innovation-oriented outcome of those projects. These skills are essential for success in the rapidly changing world and in addressing complex real world issues. So if you look to this graph, like, it does have the forcing innovation opportunities and nurturing creativity and generating new ideas, as well as building up innovation capability, as also innovating based ideas, commercializing new innovations. So how it is helping him, uh, normal students to have those. But before uh, going to the age student, we as a teacher require those things in ourselves. Then only we can able to help them build those devices and learn many more things around the way. So STEM education promotes creativity and innovation by encouraging a student to explore, experiment, and think outside the box. It empowers them to develop new ideas, inventions, technology that can drive advancement in many fields. Like from medicine, like we already discussed in the surgical sector, in the automation industry, as well as in our production facility. So it does have the following functionality as well, like uh, the person central digital literacy. We will tease them like the concept of self-development. And if they work in a team to solve some of the problem, then obviously they are they will learn the concept of leadership and equal collaboration. Like we are having the collaboration right now. I'm sharing my knowledge. If some teachers does have their knowledge in this domain, then they can also come up with the same and have it help other fellow teachers to learn those things throughout the process. So they will get uh, the technical proficiency, creation and innovation along with the research work. So this is all about the 
uh, STEM education, and uh, as you already know, the importance of STEM education. It will provide the vocational training, experimental learning, real world exposure, better networking opportunity, and more professional demand. So these are the demands of tomorrow. You must equip yourself to help our your student to learn those thing in your classroom program. Then only you can able to sustain that tag. Like I am the computer teacher, but in future you won't be the computer teacher um, for next couple of years, right? You will have to become update yourself and bring your creativity from the box itself, so that you can able to help the student and also able to help yourself to cope up with the technological improvements in our life. Like earlier, we it is it was not required to go through the Zoom meeting in our classes, but when the pandemic hit all of us, we suddenly started using the Zoom application, Google Meet, and so many things to like help a student learn the concept while having the offline class or online classes. So there is a three law of robotics which we should consider um, throughout the journey of robotics and AI classes. That is very much important for our students to have. And why to have these laws in our life to build these robotics stuff? Because it will give them the proper ethical consideration of what to do and what to not what not to do. In Hindi, there is a famous line like science began, Vardan hai to wo abhi saab diye, right? Maybe you already heard this line before. If it is a blessing, like science, the subject is a blessing, then it may become the curse if you misuse these things. So, three law of robotics deals with the same, the ethical consideration of what to do and what not to do. So, the three laws are, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Means, that. any robotic device should not, oh, sorry, we should not build those devices which can able to harm human being or until and unless a human being come nearby to the automation part and harm itself. So second law is all about robot must obey orders given it by human being except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Means we are talking about something. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for the noise. So we are talking about building some stuff. That means it should not follow our uh, our orders, which like hurts other, which will hurt other human being in front of us. Like we should not let our robots. Uh, we should not say this to our robot. Like go and harm that particular person or demolish this thing or do that stuff. So it should not conflict with the first law. Our robot will follow our words, even though we are saying some extra stuff like we are saying dive into the ocean go and outer space and harm yourself it will harm itself but not the human being by any uh, condition so third law of robotics deals with the protection of robotics like the robots itself so robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law means robot can able to rebuild itself but it's not should not conflict means after the disassembling procedure suppose if any robot malfunctions or do not follow our uh, obey our commands then it should not build itself to like uh, demolish or like hurt the human being in front of them so this is the th uh, three law of robotics which was coined by the asimovs you uh, during the that particular r u r uh, are you are play in this stage itself so these three law became so vital for each and every person each and every person who is working in this particular who are working in this particular domain so we must prioritize ourselves to follow this law and we will let our student have the understanding of this law so that they should not idealize those stuff and build something like terminator maybe you already seen some of the movies like the terminator itself which uh, entitled to destroy the world for and remove the human race from the planet itself so we should not go for those stuff for example defining terms like harm so there is obviously the limitations, like whenever we do programming, whatever we feed, whatever we do know, 
uh, that thing only we feed to our program itself. So sometimes it is very difficult to like address those words in our uh, day to day life, like harm. How a robotics body does come to know that something is uh, like a human being is saying something and it will harm themselves. So conflicting order can be complex. And additionally, these laws do not address all potential ethical dilemmas that may arise in robot human robot interaction. So we should come up with our ideas while teaching those stuff to help a student understand the concept in proper way and try not to utilize those in a negative way. So while the law of robotics are fictional and not enforceable in the real world, they have influenced discussions on the ethical development and deployment of robotics and artificial intelligence. They serve as a starting point for consideration, the moral implication of intelligent machines and guide the exploration of responsible design, programming and decision making in robotics. Maybe you already seen this particular picture before, like the ASIMO, the based humanoid. And right now we do have the, uh, uh, can you able to recall that name uh, for me? the perfect humanoid robot, which does have the presence all around the internet, which can talk and give give you the answers for the questions. Do you have any idea of that? Do so you have a citizenship of Dubai? Alexa. Alexa. Uh, no. Alexa. Oh, no. Sophia. Alexa, Alexa ma'am, you have to understand the difference Sophia. between the... Yeah, that's great. Sophia. Sophia. Here the Sophia. Yeah, Sophia is the humanoid robot which can able to answer our questions without the uh, need of any programming inside of it. So the Alexa, you have to understand the difference between the Alexa and Google, uh, that Google is stuff, which can, uh, by using the uh, button, like simple voice button and uh, saying something like Alexa, turn on the light and Alexa will turn on the light. That are the intelligent programs only, not the robotics, not the AI part, that are the intelligent program, which will execute the task as per your need. Means it will do what you ask it to do rather than the robotics and AI counterpart. So Alexa is completely different stuff. And we are talking, the thing we are talking about, the robotics AI, it means it can able to uh, decide what to do and what not to do based on the inputs coming from the sensor itself, rather than just uh, reminding itself to do that task for me. That's the task scheduler which we do have in our mobile phone. That's the alarm device we can offer. We can say the advanced version of alarm device which can able to like catch our speech and execute the task. That's all. It won't. Uh, much more but yes we can able to show our student those examples by developing in front of them to help them understand how the program executes like we will build some of the basic application in mit app inventor which will do our calculations like the addition subtraction multiplication and so on and further we will move on to the Python programming in which we will utilize the different algorithms like the OpenCV to recognize the images in front of the device and we will identify each and everything and execute the task. Yes, CT stirred, uh, raised um, his his or her hand. I don't know who is he or C. Hello, yeah. sir. Yes, sir, please. So I just wanted to know that um, I thought this session was on Tinkercad. Uh, are you training on Tinkercad? Yes. I'm going to train uh, in Tinkercad, but first day we will have the understanding of what we are going to learn throughout the journey and why this is important. Because we are not just teaching our students the concept of using those platforms like the Tinkercad MIT app platform, because it is easy. Sir. If you can, if you can go through the YouTube and uh, other places, you will find plenty full of videos which in which people are teaching those platforms like the Tinkercad and all. We, are, we okay. came here to discuss like the proper execution of your STEM classes. That is what it, uh, that is why it is important for uh, all of us to have the understanding of what we are going to teach and how we can able to implement those stuff. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. And also we will have the Tinkercad. I ask you to, to sign up for the Tinkercad platform today as I'm going to sh um, have the classes for Tinkercad platform and MIT app inventor platform from the basic to the advanced yeah, level and then further we will in, have in Sir, uh, can you again say the difference between Alexa and Sophia sir? How yeah, are sure. they different? Yeah, sure. 
the sofia does have the proper potential to come up with her idea of like uh, explaining something means it does have its own uh, algorithm to like reflect the answer it is not relevant for because of the human input given to the sofia system because we are not we did not program it to do so so the alexa on the other hand does have the verbal communication system a speech recognition system in which we have to give them the command and it will search through the internet and come up with the answer but sofia is an intelligent system right now we do have limitation in sofia like the verbal stuff only sofia can omit the answer by verbally speaking the result but in future we can able to have sofia more advanced than sofia like humanoid which can able to do the task without any human interaction or without any human guidance that is why we call it as humanoid but alexa is not called as humanoid or some kind of robot system that is basically the rpa robotics process automation in which the robotics counter program the user interface have to go through the internet search and come up with the answer and it will speak the answer written by the people over the internet but sophia can can able to generate her own idea and throw the answer to you it is not relevant from the internet it will take the reference from the internet internet but the result should will not come from the internet itself so that is the basic difference between the so alexa the devices main, and the yes ma'am the main difference is sofia can think whereas alexa just yeah. uses the data and then uh, does the work exactly ma'am that's correct okay. thank you so thank much you, for sir. your answer yes thank you, sofia sir. does have the ability to think and execute the task but alexa does not have the thinking capability that is the robotic system itself but sofia is upgraded form of robotics that is the artificial intelligence system but having some limitations still it does not have the whole command to like explore the world and walk from one place to another but in future we will see many variants of humanoid which can decide what to do and what not to do how to help human being uh, even though right now we do have patrolling car of police Uh, around this around the corner of cities but in future maybe the robotics will be deployed in different places of city and it will help people save their lives and stop the robbery or do many tasks without any human complaint or without any human intervention so overall the introduction of the law of robotics by isaac asimov serves as a thought provoking exploration of the potential and ethical consideration in the development and use of intelligent machines fostering discussions on responsible robotics and the role of human being in shaping the future of ai so implication and limitation let me tell you one thing it is more important to take care of the human safety throughout the process so we must idealize those device which is too safe for a human being and other animals around this so it must ensure the safety of human beings or any other animals around it so prioritizing the avoidance to harm the humans as well as the law aims to protect the individual from potentially risk associated with robot risk behavior and actions so ethical framework is also very much important human robot interaction is much more important because how we teach our children to become like how we are guiding our students or our children in our home to become like the perfect person in this world right the our kid must have the ethical point of view it should not harm other people and he he or she should not uh, like make other other suffer in throughout the process what we want them to become a proper person normal human being so similarly a whole human robot interaction is much more uh, important in all the aspect otherwise what will happen if ma'am you will ask a robot to do this task like bring this thing uh, from the kitchen or something somewhere place then robot will say right now i don't have mood to do that so then what will happen to you then you will say i invested so many time so many hours building you and right now you are saying to so uh, throwing tantrums on me you are saying like you won't do that for me you are not a human being you are a robot which is designed to make our life easier not be worse right so we should consider those thing as well while building the system like how human robot interaction and obviously the trust and acceptance how the the will a robot or any robotic system will perform in front of the human being there will be a proper trust 
trust building like sophia did not uh, done any like any of the rude stuff or any of the bad stuff in front in front of the people right now, up to now up to now but who knows about the future i don't know about the future maybe or maybe not she can able to do some of the action which will break our trust in the artificial intelligence like you already heard maybe you already heard about the facebook ai part like it was uh, the facebook team developed one of the ai to help himself generate the revenue more revenue because the business from company do the same stuff to generate more revenue but unfortunately what the ai did is to it started developing their own language of communication with the others so the ai started developing the language and it thrown and made their own language of communication and it started researching over inter internet like how to build the robot and how to like transplant it and everything so it carried out a complete research on that then facebook stopped that thing on that particular point of environment so we should not uh, I, our robot research should not break our trust and then only we can have the proper acceptance for those thing in our society because we are talking about something new to uh, bring in our int uh, to introduce in our society as well. so these limitations must be addressed like the interpretation and context like how, how well you said something in front of the robot is and how well it understood your point that is much more important like if i ask you i won't take a glass of water because i'm feeling sick right i'm saying casually this because i'm really a sick person right now so i'm saying this to my robotics counterpart but what happen if i say it uh, something in different point of view like i don't want it. i'm angry and i'm saying this i don't want this but as a children if your children will say i won't take this mom or i won't take this papa then you will say please babu come on, come and have this and do that stuff right so so we must understand the concept of interpretation and context how that particular line being said or how we want our robots to perform so unforeseen consequences are like the law of the laws of robotic do not account for all possible ethical dilemmas and situation that may arise in human robot interaction so as robots become more sophisticated unexpected situation may emerge where the law are insufficient so as a teacher we should come up with our own ideas implementing those stuff in our robotics and ai classes so that we we will not build those stuff to harm other people or develop anything with something like a terminator itself so conflicting priorities so robot must have the proper balance between the priorities so that it can come up the proper come up to the proper conclusion what to do first and what to do next so lack of universal adoption yes something you you will face throughout your classes the same thing i won't face because i'm having different student which belongs to different place and you will have a different uh, type of people's different type of student in your classes so the problem you will face in there is will something different compared to mine right so it should be the universal adoption whatever the law we are teaching to our robots it should be universally accepted means light the speed of light remain constant whether we we will try to prove in here in jharkhand or you will prove in other your places as well so ethical gray areas yes the transparency privacy fairness to collect the data and long term societal impacts of those things whatever you are trying to build in your robotics classes should be come under the ethical gray areas like we should take care of those things like understanding the implication and limitations of the law of robotics are very crucial for developing responsible robotics and artificial intelligence so this is all about the um, the introductory part like it does have the privacy and data security job displacement and economic it's in fact one question i came with uh, one student came with one of the question like will it going to replace human from the industry no robotics won't replace each and every human being from the uh, from the company itself from the automation itself because we need robotics in our life to have the proper maintenance because the machines will show the downtime and it won't work continuously on a regular basis right so we need to have human being as well to build those technologies that is why the government and each and every person around the world is focusing 
on more on more to learn something new rather than being dependent on what you do have on earlier basis this is not going to help you so you have to upgrade yourself throughout the technology to help yourself as well as your student to build a proper career in each and everything so accountability and transparency is much more important the human machine interaction and autonomy is important the moral machine the ethical problem ai powered ethical reasoning engine and solutions with reasoning so so these are the basic term we use in our robotic system and uh, let me summarize one more thing to you like um, i do have one more thing in here like introduction to basic robotics for students as well so comparing giving them the example like whatever i taught in this class will be different to the student because this these all are for your understanding but if you are explaining this thing to your student so you should come up with the natural examples like giving them the similarities of how robot functions and what are the basic uh, parts are required to build a robot and how we can able to execute the task with with a proper sense like in our body we do have sensing ability perception ability cognition and action abilities similarly in robotics we do have different sensor to provide the um, um uh, understanding of their environment as well as it does have the perception algorithm algorithm helps to understand what to do in this particular situation on that particular situation and cognition yes it will allow the devices to like produce the motion whenever it required so cognition ability is is the is responsible to produce the output in robotic system and action obviously the motor if motor will start running on its own then yes cognition ability is helping the motor to like turn on on clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction it will do that so the introduction will be different for students to have and if we talk in terms of like the basic building blocks of robots yes the skeleton part in our body we do have the bone structure and the need of bone structure is to accommodate each and every things inside our body right to provide a hard sack to accommodate each and everything in our body so that the organ won't come uh, come directly in contact with the atmosphere and we should not harm ourselves we will not harm ourselves so a skeleton in terms of human body and in terms of robotics what we do have is the chassis we call the outer rigid frame or a structure a chassis chassis is basically something similar to the skeleton and it provides and accommodates each and every sensor brain and output device in place so that we can able to like uh make a rigid structures and our robot can able to perform suppose if we are diving into the ocean to carry out the research work deep inside in marina trench so mariana trench or marina trench in usual terms we call marina trench so if we dive into the marina trench if you have to do the research work then yes we need some specific kind of kind of structure which we, which will accommodate um uh, each and everything inside of it and it should not be leaked like highly pressurized chamber kind of stuff to do the same thing so on that particular point of uh, environment we can also say it as chassis of robotics body it's so apart from the chassis what we do have is the sensor and this particular topic is very much important for all of us as a teacher because if we don't have any idea on different sensor what we do have in the marketplace and you should not be limited by what is present in the market because i'm going to cover the basic electronics part so you can also able to build those sensor while teaching those stuff to your students so you can also build up your sensors that is why i'm going to cover the basic electronics components so what is the sensor basically so as i already mentions mentioned sensor is all about some of the device or a device which can able to collect the information from the environment to help the robotics body to understand what is there in front of it and what is the condition of the environment right so it can able to detect the humidity it can able to detect the uh, temperature around the robotics body as well as uh, it can give the perception of some obstacle present in front of the robotics device then only robotics will perform its work right even though the mars rover which was sent earlier can able to detect the presence of obstacle in front of the device otherwise what will happen suppose if any uh, blockage come in front of the robotic structure then what will happen it will go and collide with the body itself so we should not 
to let our robot to collide with the wall or any obstacle in front of the device. So we must take care of the sensory parts in our robotics to collect the environment, collect the uh, information from the environment. If we, if I give you the similarities, like uh, you can find these images over all the internet as well. But if I give you the similarities of how we can correlate different stuff present in our body, then you can see we do have eyes to give us the sight of different things happening around us. Uh, in similarly, we do have CMOS image sensors. Like in general terms, we can call it as cameras, right? Inside of the camera is the CMOS sensor. So maybe you already heard of the CMOS sensor, which can able to collect the image in uh, like visual information from the, it can able to capture the visual information from the environment. So in body, we do have uh, something called uh, to, maintain the balance and let us stand on our foot without um, without uh, without dropping in so in robotics we do have inertial system like the gyroscopes and accelerometer gyroscope and accelerometer is one of the major device which made spacex a successful space company you know why spacex is so much popular nowadays do you have any idea ma'am answers We all heard about the space. Because they are, they, they are able to uh, send people as uh, to space tourism. Yeah, we can say that that is the future of SpaceX. But yeah, they are already sending people uh, for space tourism. Yeah. You know why this? Anyone else, ma'am, from your side, from the teacher's side, why Elon Musk and SpaceX, especially the SpaceX is so much popular nowadays because of one major reason. Maybe you already heard that particular reason before. But I would like to know from your side. I wanted want to have these answers from your side. Sorry, sir, what is the question, sir? Yeah. Why yeah. SpaceX is so much popular nowadays? Apart from the like, it does have the competition with uh, ISRO, NASA, and so many space space company, right? But why SpaceX is so much popular, and they are still developing many more rocketry devices to because send. Because they are bringing the rocket back. Actually, no one. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's the perfect answer I wanted to hear, sir. So yeah. SpaceX, SpaceX does have the technology to bring the rocket system back to the surface of Earth, right? Otherwise, other all the ISROs and all their rocket get yeah. uh, damaged in the space and it just fall out. Yeah, it, it fall fall in to the uh, ground or Oceans, in uh, yeah. some Oceans. of the seas, ocean, right? Yeah. We yeah. often drop that rocketry system in the ocean, but yeah. SpaceX developed some of the Recently, each and every rocket which can be reusable. Reusable exactly. means we can we can able to take that uh, rocket back to our Earth atmosphere and it will land safely and we will reutilize the same to uh, launch the second rocketry system with the help of the previous one. So what we are doing, Elon Musk is addressing the proper major challenge. That is the sustainable development goal and the reusable concept. So it is, they are reducing the garbage flow to send the people on other planet or send something to the space itself. That is why SpaceX is so much popular nowadays. And why I'm giving the example of SpaceX, because they are utilizing the accelerometer, the accelerometer and the gyro, the gyrometer. We use the barometer also, accelerometer, barometer. Barrow, yeah, barrow, barometer, barometer, yes, sir. The reason why I'm mentioning these two, because I would like to say something about these two. Stability. Obviously, the rocketry system consists many of the devices, not only limited to accelerometer, gyrometer, or barometer. Barometer gives the, uh, gives the rocketry system sense of certain heights, right? Heights. And, and the pressure difference, and the difference between the pressure. It can able to detect the difference between pressure. Mm -hmm. So why I'm mentioning these particular two things, accelerometer and gyrometer, because if we talk in terms of the axis, like we do have three axes known to a human being, like many more axes are there, but we do have three major axes in our point of time. So SpaceX can able to locate the rocketry system in point of space to identify the orientation of the rocketry system while returning back from space to Earth. So it can able to balance the system using these sensors like the accelerometer and gyroscope to identify the exact location of rocketry system in space so that it can throw the uh, propulsion system and able to balance the rocketry system so that it can land safely on the Earth's surface. That is why I mentioned the inertial system in here. And by the term inertial system, I mean the accelerometer and gyrometer. That is very much important for anything. So yeah, in the... 
Yes, we, yes we use this in the drone also like all this yeah, yeah. exactly what i was okay. going to say yeah. in future classes after the class 10 we will have series of different things as well like 3d printing as well as drone technology i will cover each and everything if you do have free time to join over then you are so much welcome to in this classes i will mention each and every aspect of drone technology and 3d printing and by the term drone technology i am not referring to that four quadro for Obvious. rotor system. That's only the flying machine. You are mean to say that sensors which is uploaded yeah. uh, in that. And uh, why I'm saying the why I'm saying that I'm not going to cover the four rotor stuff because that not actual drone. Drone is something which Hello. which the US uses to carry out the war against the other country. So that particular drone, single propeller with proper flap design, the wing design. And all that is the actual drone system, but many more robotics company will show the four uh, concept of four, four, rotors. four rotor system, <laughs> like the quadrocopter itself. Right? Very true, very true. Yeah. yeah, that is not the drone. That's the play. That's the playing toy. Anyone can build using the reference of YouTube. You can able to go through the robo.in or many more websites are there there to buy the components and build those device on your own. So you can you don't have to have proper idea on that. But we will discuss. The design implementations, like how we can able to design proper wings for our drone so that it will reduce the air drag on that. In future classes, we will have that. Right now, we will focus on this one and let me proceed with this thing. So in, in our body, we do have the audio system. In robotics body, we do have microphones and speakers to omit the same results. Like Mike is responsible to gather the uh, verbal inputs from the surrounding and a speaker is responsible to produce the speech stuff and the sound waves to help other people to have the proper understanding of what is happening inside the robotics body so in in body we do have fluids like we do have um, veins and arteries to flow the uh, to continue the flow of fluids in our body but in robotics what we do have biochips and micro pumps and uh, micro pumps and pumps we are utilizing now in one of the project that is the WMS water management system remember one device is there sir in the market uh, on that particular device you can see you can able to detect the presence of water level in your tanks do you have your device installed this device installed in your home yeah, it's it's available in the market, right? Yeah, it it's, is installed. Yeah. That how much how much price you paid for that, ma'am? I'm sorry, it was purchased by the association. I'm not quite sure of that. Okay. Yeah, so, but uh, I think I paid it in the five thousand or something. Okay. We can make okay. we can make 5, it the cost five thousand. Yeah. So I built this device for my student, uh, approximately around a thousand rupees. And this particular device can able to detect the presence of dissolved oxygen as well as pH and also the TDS, turbidities uh, uh, input to the system so that you can able to see those in your mobile phone application to, uh, to see the content of dissolved minerals and dissolved oxygen as well as the pH balance. Because sometimes what happens in our society the water management persons over the municipal corporation mix the more amount of chlorine into the water. And uh, we cannot able to like evaluate the same and uh, we face some of the major issues without without having the proper water coming from in our home. So we build that device using the pumps and all. And uh, right now we can able to detect the presence of um, the water label. Those things, those examples, why I'm, I'm why saying those examples, because you can also build those examples with the help of a student to show them the real-time implementation of robotic system in your classes as well. So mm -hmm. in, in our body, we do have RF communication kind of stuff, means our brain obviously, and not the brain, generates that much of the RF, con 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 RF communication. We do have brain waves, which can be detected through the MRIs and all, but it is not that much strong to carry out the communication between the two things. But in robotics system, what we do have is the RF con communication, that is the radio frequency communication. And by the term radio frequency communication means the oscillator tuner switch and filters mm -hmm. so in this segment when we, the time when we will explore this segment we will learn the proper cryptography concept and you know also could be added in that no sort of 
yes sir antina antina also could be a part of that right? yeah yeah antina is also the part yeah absolutely that's correct sir so we will learn the concept of cryptography and why to introduce cryptography in our robotics class because whenever we build some of the devices of robotics which can be controlled using the mobile app mobile okay. app or the rf communication means rf <coughs> is, stands for the radio frequency communication so i'm talking about in, yeah i'm uh, talking about some of the encryption methods so using those encryption in our devices which help our robotics body secure otherwise what will happen sir It's nasa already, hmm. nasa already sent some of the rovers to the mars <laughs> and if a normal person can able to communicate with those mars those That's rovers true. then what we will happen yeah We everything will be doomed. Yeah. Everything will be doomed, right? So that is why we need to have encryption. And I am, I am already introduced these things to our student apart from the syllabus, so that they can build their pure core knowledge on based on these topics, rather than just teaching them the syllabus okay. and moving on to the examinations. The reason to implement the STEM robotics AI in our classes to let our student have the practical implementation of those stuff. And we, if we do not teach them in the classes, then it will become the subject in which they will get one of the book from the market. They will read the syllabus and they will get hundred out of hundred in the <laughs> conventional. Uh, the question paper in the examination okay. itself so Good we should thought. not yeah we should not go for that we will build some of the practical stuff for our student to help them understand the concept so we do have focus system in our body like the eyes and some of the auto focus the cmo sensor is already equipped with the auto focus stuff to like uh, focus on particular thing itself so in our body we do have nose to provide the sense of smell in uh, robotics awesome. stuff we do have different gas sensor to identify the presence of gases around like co2 co nox sox and so many things like electronic these are the electronic noses for the robotic system so if we talk about this taste we do have our um, taste bud in our ji, mouth i am very sorry to interrupt you yeah. um just by looking at all these uh, you know pieces that you have put up on display out here i have mm -hmm. a question out here so yes, depending on our requirement are we expected to purchase all these things and then use it in our projects uh, i will show you one thing ma'am after this slide let me show you right now then i can able to answer your question so i uh, summarize some of the basic component which you need to have okay. in your robotics class these are the sensors which you must have in your classes that not much of the cost and i guess it will cost around 2000 or something in the For all these parts together yeah all these part together so if you refer to the normal market or if you come in contact with any uh, vendor provider they can able to guide you through the kit and all mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you can get it from near and like humidity sensor itself cost around 100 rupees so that is not, that is not much of the cost ma'am that's right that's what i'm saying so yeah. i thought okay all these uh, units will be no 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 that's costly. that's only for representation ma'am like i'm just uh, giving the summary view of what we do have in our body and how we can build yeah, those yeah i'm things. able to relate yeah. to that but my concern yeah. was that if we have to purchase if you have to uh, create uh, a specific project say for example yeah. as you had mentioned earlier a uh, water level uh, a monitor Uh, yeah. So, do we have to purchase something very specific to that, and is that likely to be very no, costly? The, is my the things, the things I will compose for all of you. I will share you one list of bill of material for the components, so that you can go through the market as well as any uh, service provider like the Exid Academy, like Exid Robotics is sponsoring this uh, particular classes for all of you teachers out there. So you can also contact them to have these kits, um, like the components for yourself. it won't much of the cost and you can uh, buy it in a very minimal charges to learn and the things in the stem and robotics classes okay thank you so these things i collected throughout the year ma'am like uh, you will get microbit or other uh, hardware devices sorry it is not visible properly okay let me show you we understood you understood right yeah. you got it. the microbit i purchased one by one i did not invested up uh, the same amount like 15000 or 20000 at one at once but i invested little little amount to like have these all in my classes to show them the varieties of thing present in the market rather than showing them only yeah, the arduino sense. thank you yeah. the board member ma'am uh, remember they asked for the arduino and other stuff right but in my point of view arduino is limited one and the basic one to start with but in future the time when you will introduce the artificial intelligence then 
that it time you would, yeah then you do not have to like use this particular device you should go for the node mcu esp32 cam module and raspberry pi system then only yes. you can able to execute the python program in there otherwise these these devices won't work on the python programming itself so let me go back to the sensor uh, and uh, I, I i just have yes, a question sir. curious question out here because you just mentioned that if you are hmm. going to use arduino uh, board it is not going to work along with python but how is it that uh, you know it is being recommended by the board yeah the board member i i there is a one flaw there is always a flaw whenever they will come up with the idea to start with the arduino right we can say that arduino is abc of robotics and ai but Arduino is not everything in robotics and AI. We cannot able to introduce the Python program. Let me show you one great example to make you help you understand this particular concept. Let me open my PyCharm. Maybe already using the PyCharm for teaching in your classes. So yeah. just let me open the PyCharm for you. Yeah. So I'm going to execute. I'm turning my camera off in here, ma'am, so that my camera being will be utilized in that program so that you will understand the limitation of Arduino in your classroom program. Earlier, I faced the same. I'm just executing this project. So my screen is visible to all of you, ma'am and sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm uh, executing the program now. And uh, you will see the problem with the Arduino board okay? because Arduino board does not support that much of the processing capabilities. So you can start teaching them using the Arduino board, but it won't help them understand the thing. So I taught this particular program to my students in the classroom program. So now, apart from the video, you can see there is one thing, one person, one bottle and something is detected, right? So the the video is showing itself the probability of how much it is the intelligent system, how much it is uh, confirmed that uh, something is there in front of this. So 0.92 reflects that my algorithm uh, is 92% sure that a person is in front of the device itself. So this is how this program works. And to execute this program, you need to have the Raspberry Pi system or ESP modules. Otherwise, it won't work uh, on the conventional stuff like the Arduino ID itself. Arduino is limited for junior students who try to learn the basic of robotics, not for the big project development. You can compare the memory sizes. You do, you do have now. There is a difference between MacBook and normal Lenovo system. Yes or no, ma'am? Yes. Yes. So Lenovo system is Arduino and the MacBook is the Raspberry Pi system, all I can say. So you have to choose both <laughs> Very of Very funny them. comparison. Yes, go ahead. You can use both of them. See, board members, obviously, whenever something new comes into the existence, they will ask you to start with something. So this one is the starting point. Arduino is the starting point, but we should not be limited by the using of Arduino because we cannot able to accommodate the Python script and the Python programming in the Arduino to execute the serial commands. No, so I, I understand from where you are coming. Uh, I can fully understand. But then uh, when we talk about uh, from the perspective of the syllabus, uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, is what is given in the syllabus for 9th and 10th uh, not sufficient to be implemented using Arduino? Uh, uh, sorry, it, little. Can I answer with you? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Please, sir. Ma'am, they are telling Arduino to use only for the Tinkercad because when you use the Tinkercad, yes. then there fundamentally you can use the Arduino, Arduino Uno board, and then you can whatever Saurabhji told all the sensors, no, that you can connect the sensor, ma'am. And when you go further, then you may need the Raspberry Pi. What sir is telling? No, no, no. See, I understand. See, uh, when you work with Tinkercad, you will have to go for Arduino. I don't yeah. deny that. But my yeah. concern out here is not that. My concern here is when we talk about, uh, you know, the in the context of the syllabus. I am uh, because most of us actually, you know, though we would like to not limit ourselves to the syllabus. As a as a teacher, I would personally yeah. not uh, uh, be. Uh, I would not prefer to be bogged down by the limitations as, of the syllabus. Yeah. But then let me answer. Let me answer that, your doubt, ma'am. Yeah, let me answer your doubt, ma'am. Again, so whenever we go for the Arduino for the Python and the complete syllabus deployment in our classes, the problem I faced 
in my point of view like in my experience i faced one of the major problem you have to buy the sensors attachment for many stuff to accommodate each and everything in this to help a student understand but if we use one of these device let me show you one of these device uh, let me share my screen so i hope my uh, screen is visible so one of these device and able to help us gather the image vision because this one is, this one also is the microcontroller itself so they asked us to use the tinkercad platform on the first hand because we have to introduce these things like uh, the open source platform to our student while teaching something to them so we can able to utilize the circuitry in here let me show you one thing in here because tinkercad does not have more than two of the microcontrollers one is the micro bit which i showed in here first and then second one is the arduino these two devices are only mentioned in the tinker cat platform but we cannot able to tease the concept of ai using these two um, microcontrollers out there so we have to go for the mit app inventor so my mit app inventor does have the capability to implement the ai counterpart first of all but when we teach them the concept of artificial intelligence we must uh, let them have the understanding of python programming and through the python programming we need these kind of stuff like esp32 cam modules or node mcu or the raspberry pi system to help them understand and that will only cope up with complete syllabus otherwise we cannot able to complete the ai counterpart uh, on these platforms like the arduino itself I hope uh, yeah, you, thank you. you yeah. got my point back. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we can start with the audio. Ideally, uh, we may, we may, uh, yeah. as you just mentioned, we may probably start with uh, Arduino, yeah. um, but then it is not going to be sufficient uh, to take forward for the, at the ninth and the 10th level. You yes, may have to shift to the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, because okay. the syllabus they came up with, the I, they mentioned like IIT uh, Delhi gave them the syllabus. If you ask me honestly, I'm also from the mechanical engineering background from BIT Sindri. So if you ask me that uh, about the things they included in the syllabus is purely from the robotic syllabus we had in our last semester. The same exact lines from the mechanical engineering department under the robotics tab. I don't know what what they invented or what they done with the syllabus itself, but the syllabus is also not sufficient for the student to have the proper understanding of robotics and AI. They wanted to implement it using the theoretical manner, but that is not sufficient for our students. We have to add something new to our classes so that only we can able to help them understand the concept of robotics and AI. That is up to us, ma'am. The, uh, the style of teaching, like the method you use to teach students, the implementation of these things will be different from me and from other teachers in the society. That that makes us different uh, from each and every perspective. Uh, so just to sum up whatever you said, if we use Tinkercad, okay, yeah. then there is a limitation. So with Tinkercad, we, if we use MIT app, so we can also implement python in that so we don't have to buy uh, no 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 ma'am mit app inventor is only for the app develop app development for mobile application development and we cannot able to use the raspberry pi system for the same we can utilize the arduino in there for the same but a few examples like let me show you one of the example i built using the ai system of uh, mit app inventor platform AI calculator. Okay. So one example. Welcome to our AI calculator app. Please press speak button to ask questions. No, we can't see sort of. We can't. Yeah. Okay. Let me remove my Yeah, screen. remove the background. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this particular thing. Okay. Let me remove Let the blur. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just allow me a second, please. So if I remove the blur, you can see the screen, right? Yeah. One of the application I built for my student. So if you click on the speak button, so 12 plus 13. So one of the basic example, which I can show um, by using the MIT app inventor platform, like it will give you the calculation of whatever the question you will ask from this device. So it will help you accordingly. So we can accommodate this thing in our Arduino 
but uh, if you are teaching them the python scripting the python aspect of uh, the robotics and ai counterpart then you must utilize the uh, if you're going to use the proper ai implementation in a class then you must use the raspberry pi system or some higher uh, microcontrollers for the same Oh, uh, sir, uh, Arduino, I think, uh, Tinkercad, I think, can be downloaded. What about Raspberry Pi? How do we get that? We need to buy the uh, software? Yeah, you need to, you need, right now it is not important, ma'am. You don't have to worry about the Raspberry Pi thing because we are going to execute this thing systematically. First, we will complete the Arduino lessons, Tinkercad platform, MIT app and vendor platform. And uh, one more thing I showed. I will introduce you, the, you to the microbit platform. Then we will move into the Python programming. We will have complete 50 days of Python programming apart from this domain. And in the programming session, I will help you understand the concept of implementing the algorithms to have the proper uh, image recognition or verbal recognition or some kind of stuff like that mm -hmm. in which you can able to build the system which will answer your questions and uh, the ITMS, the famous ITMS project, Intelligent Traffic Management System in which the camera is, is responsible to detect the presence of seat belt, helmet, those kind of stuff we will explore in our uh, Python programming session. And those things, uh, the time when you will learn the Python programming, the time, uh, that time you require the Raspberry Pi system to have. Right now, it is not important. We will start with the basic, like from the Arduino, and then we will move on to the Node MCU, one of the best microcontrollers exist in, uh, nowadays. And then further, if you like to go for the advanced version of these things, then I will introduce the Python programming and so many things. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So first, uh, actually today is our first day. So that is why I asked each and every members to have a uh, sign up for these platforms so that we can, I already shared one of the detailed documentation on circuitry, like the um, Tinkercad platform and also the design of the Tinkercad platform. So you can also sign up for this thing and we will have a series of classes in which I will explain each and every components, how to utilize that, how to create the result, how to like build the projects using the simulation platform. And further, you can buy those components to build, build those things practically and have the proper understanding on those system as well. Because sometimes what happens, the simulation platform will work fine, right? But the time when you will uh, go through the hardware device, it will start throwing some of the errors. So we will also help you. I will also help you understand uh, how to resolve those things. And, and one more thing I would like to share with you. Uh, let me open the ID. I will explain the C++, embedded C++ programming. Yeah, let me show you. Let me share my screen with you. I will help you learn these as well. The Arduino IDE, in which you will go through the embedded C++ programming. And through this, you can able to accommodate the same functionality which we are going to learn in the digital platform, that is the Tinkercad. You can have the simple programming format to execute the same task which we are going to do it through the simulation platform. Let me show you how it is different to utilize the embedded C programming and the Tinkercad uh, platform for the same. Suppose if I take one of the example, suppose if I take one of the example in Tinkercad platform to blink the LED, I'm deleting this same and uh, I'm going for the blink program in here. I'm just dragging the thing into the uh, drawing area and uh, completing the task. If I hit the simulation button, you can see the LED will start blinking at the interval of one second. If you look into the code, the reason why the block code is important for you to learn because you will have a basic understanding how this thing is working. Like I set the built-in LED to high and waited for one second and then I'm turning off the LED and uh, waiting again, again, waiting for the same one second for the same and it will go on and on in forever loop. So I will explain those things as well, like the basic of uh, scratch programming in which you will learn what is the digit concept of digital analogs and what is high, low and the setup of these very instructions. And further, we will move 
to text based editing in which i will introduce you the c++ programming to help you understand the concept of programming language how you can accommodate those themes and how you can uh, give the, your robotic stuff the commands to follow the same so we will have these and then further we will move for app development part in mit app inventor platform so these are the basic concept of uh, the robotics and how we are going to how i am going to cover it throughout one question came into the chat room will you provide any certificate on tinkercad python see sir uh, there is no a proper certification available over internet as well because tinkercad is open source platform as i already mentioned and i'm not going to charge you anything to like uh, let me have 5000 or 10000 to i'm just giving these for free to all of the teacher out there so in return what i want you to acknowledge my effort and uh, pro repeat the process and help me with your doubt so that i can also improve myself into this domain because without teaching those stuff to a teacher then it is not possible for me to have a proper understanding in this field as well because human beings are entitled to make mistakes throughout the time so i hope you understood what i what i'm trying to say right so i'm just sharing my knowledge in here if you would like to have the proper stem certification then yes uh, you can contact any of the team members from exceed or any of your choice like exceed is providing a best possible stem certified stem educator certificate on a lower cost so you will have the same for the same yeah and in case you would like to buy some of the components from the market i will help you with the name of the components but before buying those thing from the market re verify it because there are many duplicate products are available in the market in such lower price i can show you uh, what with one reference if i search the google in front of you then you will see one of the example the let's see arduino you know okay let me search through the arduino you know So you will find Arduino, you know, in twenty four ninety nine, three thirty six, two eighty five, five forty five. So be careful what you are buying from the market because maybe it is sixteen ninety nine, three thirty six, or twenty nine, something like that. So make sure what you what you are buying and uh, the called good quality. You should get good qualities of these component from the market or from the exit team, so that it will be uh, good for you to complete the task. Otherwise, what will happen? Sometimes I do have like hundred of Arduino, you know, with me, which is not working because of these Chinese chip present in the board itself. So go for the uh, the cheap version rather than the SMD version. Let me show you the difference. I'm turning off my background again so that it will be visible to all of you so i'm removing the blur you can see one of the chip is uh, mentioned in here i will also introduce this particular device throughout our classroom program from the next day onwards so, so this is in duplicate. the comments yes sir this is duplicate yeah this is duplicate what i'm okay. trying to say original one will be like yeah. the not the, the duplicate uh, the ic is in smd form like yeah, the surface mounted form so whatever you buy you make sure what you are buying from the market otherwise there are very many copies of chinese cheap product they will sell you on 1600 or 1700 but uh, you will not get the proper thing in your hand uh, by the same so try to help yourself on that if you have any doubts then you do know my whatsapp number you can ping me over and i can help you out to have those things so i believe our time is too much for today so let's see uh, the things are already covered in today's session like the sensors but i did not mention it properly i have to go through the same tomorrow to complete the session so for now for today we will end the session for today and we will continue our journey tomorrow so i will introduce each and every sensors tomorrow and then we will have proper understanding of a robotic system and basic electronics component so that it will be helpful for you to understand the abc of how to implement this thing in your classes as well as it will help you understand few more concepts in robotics and ai yeah so, just a question before you yes, wind up i have a yeah, yeah, basic sure, sure. question out here is it necessary that the children be introduced to some kind of circuitry knowledge uh, uh, like building a basic circuit like how you do that in breadboards is it yeah. is it necessary 
yeah it is necessary it is necessary as a teacher point of view ma'am it is completely necessary otherwise what will happen they will they will not go for any higher projects they want to build in uh, you in the concept of robotics and ai you should explain them the basic functionality of how led works that is the concept the board members are trying us to introduce more practicals right so we have to introduce them using the conventional method like the breadboard arrangement and using the circuitry arrangement then only we will proceed for the advanced version of it otherwise if they do not know about that led means light emitting diode and how that particular device works then it will be useless for them to learn the concept of robotics and ai in any case we say say but, they... but then uh, but then uh, uh, you know i'm i'm i feel a little handicapped out here the reason being that uh, you know i uh, i i may not be so very strong in my physics isn't it that is why i made this session for you ma'am for all of you right but, but then uh, is is it not something that needs to be covered from the physics end yeah it is something that need to be covered but uh, what we can do the board member already introduced this uh, this chapter itself so we have to come up with the information more information from the internet from the people we can get help from and uh, try to help our student learn the concept otherwise what will happen to you ma'am suppose if any student because the students are too curious in the, in the classroom itself if they ask you like what is led if they are if you are showing the basic example of blink using the arduino or you know you know or any board then if they ask you like question what is led and how it works and if you do not have the idea of these things see i arranged this program for the teachers out there so you guys must have these basic knowledge so that you can uh, uh complete uh, carry out the same in your classroom program otherwise it will become difficult for you as we already seen many things come comes in our students mind and they will ask random question or anything that come to their mind yeah makes sense yeah master yeah. sir can we have that uh, pdf what you have presented uh pdf sir for what just uh, we have presented now your like all the sensors and the basic introductions yeah sir i am i am uh, actually sir i am i will share you the bunch of Uh, the documentation on this, but I cannot able to share the complete PDF as no, I mentioned. No, that looks that looks very attractive and luring actually. That no very catchy one. Yeah, actually, sir, uh, that very is very impactful in the class. Yeah, I am taking the help to organize this classroom program from the Exceed Robotics, and they are helping with their LMS system. So they do have very minor things like minor payment stuff to go with. And if you contact them, you already filled the registration form. I believe they do have your the um, your numbers and all. They will come in contact and they will guide you throughout to have the LMS access. So perfect, LMS perfect. is required because if you are teaching something to your student, then you must have those series of lectures. Lecture plan in your in your portal itself, so that will be helpful for you to have, sir. Sure. So I can so I can provide you the free service in here with my knowledge, sir. But uh, for getting the components and all, I prefer um, you to go with the Exceed uh, Robotics team to have these things like the proper uh, kits and all. So they will help you with the. Uh, genuine model of the arduino you know and everything you need for these classroom program and they won't cost much more because they mentioned it uh, to me that uh, they will going they are going to charge nominal on these things for each and every teachers out there because they are empowering the uh, teachers out there and how much is that likely to be uh, ma'am uh, the pricing and all i don't have any idea really? but myself i got the training from the exceed earlier so uh, approximately it will cost around us uh, 5 to 5000 around to get all the kits and all but and similarly the lms access you have to discuss with them separately because yes, this is what doing... lms access we need content we need yes sir the content you have to uh, get in touch with them so that they can able to tell because you are going to teach 200 or 300 of students in your classroom right exactly so you need to have the proper discussion is that them. is that their content is aligned to our syllabus what our exactly. board exactly each and every because um, we are uh, we are also from the xa team they are running the robotics classes from last 4 years so before the introduction to the circular in the school itself they are running the classes so each and everything the day we received the cu curricular the each and everything is mentioned uh, in the lms portal itself okay so they have aligned this level yes. our yes. it okay. is it is properly aligned fine thank you yeah.
Sir, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the please. Stempedia textbook, uh, does it help uh, in what you're teaching? No, no, ma'am. To be honest, no. Okay. Because Stempedia is not collected to your, connected to your STEM? Stempedia is all about DIY stuff thing. DIY means do it yourself kit kind of stuff. And uh, I personally do not like the teachers to go for the DIY because we don't want our children to become the assembler of tomorrow. Yeah, less, them... less exploration in that. Actually. Yeah. You don't explore much. They will give you a bunch of things to assemble. And, and you are you, limited you are within that. But there is a class 9 and class 10 textbook from Stempedia, right? Yeah. That only you can also get that content over internet, ma'am. If you if you uh, type down the topics in the Google search, you will find plenty full of contents in internet. Why these things are important for our student? Because they already experimented those stuff in the classroom program. So they went the proper theoretical portion must be aligned with the practical stuff. Then only it will become impactful in our classroom program. Otherwise, it will be useless for us to have the same. You can yes, also God, build. Sir. You can also build the I got, sir. Uh, we haven't introduced AI and robotics. We are going to introduce it next year. Yeah. So we need the uh, board textbooks, right? Class 9 and class 10. Yeah, they will provide you. The XC team will provide you. Uh, actually, I'm in touch with the XC team and we are completing our, we are compiling our uh, previously written stuff, like whatever you've seen in the LMS. So rather than going for the textbook, ma'am, see, this is the digital era in which we are utilizing these particular zoom feature to communicate with each other then why we are forcing ourselves to go back in past and utilize the textbook for the same so utilize the online platform to have each and everything over there so that you can write down and also during the classroom program you just you need to use the projector or a smart screen just log into the system and you start teaching this student because the content is already present in the lms itself so we are moving from that age, ma'am, where we used to have the notebook and all to the digital world. So why we are forcing ourselves to go yeah. for the same? Uh, yeah, textbook is like uh, for the, textbook is the uh, syllabus. Syllabus. Uh -huh. yeah. Textbook is the for propaganda the from the different robotics provider. And if you go through the content of different robotics thing provider, they will ask you like 17,000 or 24,000 or 50,000 for the training and the kids material. Why to buy 17,000 kids from them? Either to go with the genuine uh, vendors out there or directly buy it from the market itself. You know? It will okay, be based sir. on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Master, sir, can you get a, a contact details to get the LMS access? Uh, actually, sir, I will share. Uh, I will help the team know about this uh, this particular portion, and they will get back to you. If you Thank all you. are interested, then I will let the team know, and they will directly come in contact with you. They will explain each and everything apart from my regular class with. The reason why I, I do not want to discuss it in our classroom program, because I don't want to make our teacher uncomfortable to, for this classroom. The success of this classroom will be um, will be because of the free sessions to them, right? And yes, they will contact you or you can drop your uh, numbers, mobile numbers in the comment below, comment section, so that I will save those uh, comment and share with the same with the team. They will uh, directly call you up and uh, explain everything. Sir. Thank you, Sauroji. So tomorrow yeah. we have a session again at six o'clock, right? Yeah. Tomorrow, ma'am, uh, just sign up for the Tinkercad platform and uh, I will explain the basic of the uh, electronic sensors and basic electronics. Then we will move on to the Tinkercad, Tinkercad platform. I will explain from in depth uh, the Tinkercad platform. Then we will move for the MIT App Inventor platform. And further, we'll have the embedded C programming lessons for the same. Great. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, the comments are coming in for the mobile numbers. Yeah, I will share this mobile number with them only. And uh, I will try my best to, to let the team know that uh, they will not disturb you for the marketing and other things. So because we want this class uh, classroom program to be succeeded, right? So I will uh, plan accordingly. So thank Hello, you. Sir? Yes, ma'am, please. If you do have any question, okay. then please help me. Yes, with sir, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Actually, sir, you showed the Arduino Uno board. And yeah. uh, in that you told that like it can be a duplicate one. So how will come to know that is it duplicate or it's the original one? 
Okay, the major difference between the duplicate and original one is the um, the uh, imported company, imported country, right? Something which comes from the Italy, Italy is the, that's original. yeah, Italy. The original version comes from the Italy, and it comes around the price tag of uh, twelve hundred or thirteen hundred. But, but it's you can, green is in color, sir, right? Yeah, it's the green, green is in color. color. Correct, yeah. sir. Yeah. The green is in color. You can also find it in over the internet service, but. Why to waste your time searching those themes? Just come, go through the uh, vendors out there, like the robotics company, as I mentioned, Exit. Just go through them and they will provide you each and everything. Even though if the problem with, if you do find any problem with any of the circuitry, they will send you the replacement. I, I believe they do have the return policies as well. So you don't have to worry about those stuff, finding each and everything. Otherwise, what will happen? You will find two of the things in the internet and two of the things in the offline market. Then it will be complicated for you to continue the learning process. And within five days, you require, you need to have those things as well to like uh, uh, go parallelly with my classroom program to like go for the experimentation, taste and all to learn wisely. Okay, so sir, that Arduino, you know, which we get for 400 or 500 rupees, they all are duplicate ones? Yeah, mostly, uh, most of them are the duplicate ones, yes. Okay, and everyone have that uh, SMD IC, right, at Mega 328? Yeah, SMD one is not the good one, good option. Go for the IC version, the full-scale IC, integrated circuit version. That is EEPROMS, okay. the electronically erasable programmable memory. So, that will okay, be Okay, so great. that IC means that... Uh, uh, through hole win uh, one uh, that uh, not the smd one right not the smd one but uh, sometimes it may look similar but uh, there will be different or you know you that, know that bigger size full fledge i see yeah bigger size good yeah. um good in shape like this one like this one, yes. you is? will see the difference yes, yes, right. the quality of the board will be uh, different compared to the duplicate ones so this one is the full size the ic one and it works fine. It works almost fine. This one the is SM original. This Sorry, one is original. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. no fly robot. No, ma'am. No, this is not the original. Let me show you the original one. You will not find the original one in the market because that is hard too much. Of course, this one is the original one. R three. You know R three. The green one. The green one is the original. But sometime you will find uh, 400, 500 rupees of this price tag of this green one as well. So contact the vendors. Contact the vendors. They will help you uh, to gather these all, ma'am. Do not invest your time in these uh, thing buying because you will find plenty full of differences between the pricing and all. Yes, yes. So try to get some good one from the vendors itself. Okay. And my just last question, sir, that yeah. you said about LMS system. For what exactly like LMS system uh, is required? Like. LMS can... does have, uh, because I'm utilizing the Exceeds LMS, Exceed already, um, like I already mentioned that this classroom program is totally guided by the Exceed team. And uh, they are like helping me to carry out the classes using their LMS portal, learning management system. They do have the name of Resourceify. So do, you will get each and every slaves, syllabus content in the LMS itself. If you want to have these, then you can come in contact with them. Otherwise, you can continue with the classes, free classroom program. There is no issue on that. Moment. At the same time, Ashtar, yeah. you can drop their email ID also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm dropping the email yeah, ID drop. for okay. them. So info, that is the info at the rate exceedroboticwork.com. Or let me share one of the number. You can contact uh, the sir, the Tatha sir, which will help you gather the same. Let me grab the number. Yeah, I'm just writing down his number in here. So you can drop him the call or ask the same, like how much it will cost or something like that. 974891823. Yeah. You can ask the same. So they will help you on that, ma'am. Yes, sir. Anything else I would I can help you with on? We can't see the message, uh, Master Sara. Excuse dropped. me, sir. Yeah. Uh, is the okay, okay, actually? okay. I sent the direct message to Swati, ma'am. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> removing to all. Sorry, everyone, everyone in yeah, the meeting. Yeah. 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 Info and the rate. Yeah. Okay, all right. Now you yeah. can see the message, sir. Very extremely sorry. What is the spelling? Is it exceed E X C W E D? Yeah, yeah, E X C W E D. 
www.officeofrobotixworks.com okay, you. Yeah, or you can drop the call directly to the person concerned person they will help you out of having those components uh, if you sir uh, just wanted to know if yeah. exceed if we go for a proper sessions classes so does mm-hmm. exceed provide certification yeah they will give you the certification after this completion like if you if you go for the kits and all the lms and kits and you as you are already joining this classroom program you will receive the certificate if you enroll for the same the lms stuff and the um the kits itself two things okay. if you take apart from this classroom program yes you will receive the uh, base stem certified educator certificate from okay. the academy. yes okay fine thank you sir yeah so thank you so much uh, everyone for today joining this session and i hope i help you clear some of the basic doubts in robotics and automation and under, uh, have you and by tomorrow we will have another session on um, the basic of electronics and sensors and then we will have a, a series of lectures planned for tinkercad platform mit app inventor platform and python programming at the end thank you so much ma'am tomorrow at thank 6 you. no sir tomorrow uh, at 6 Okay, let me tomorrow, drop. Tomorrow. Okay, just let me create a poll again in the group so that each and every person come up with the same timing idea so that we will organize the training session again tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I will share the polls in the group so that uh, the mutual time uh, from each and every person I will take and start the session tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you each and every thank person. You, thank, yeah. you, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you sir.